Howdy all, this is Shane. I have a seriously bad cold right now, so I apologize if I sound a little funny, other than my accent. This is the Carillon M16 4X. There's next to nothing online about these, so I took a bit of a gamble on this mixer. Basically, I wanted to upsize to a larger mixer with more mic-ins, as well as direct outs. Now, my options for around the Australian four to $500 mark were pretty limited on what had the functionality that this has. And this was initially $7.99, and one of the good things to come out of the Allen's slash Billy Hyde sale here in Australia was this. I picked this up for $2.70 something, or $2.69 or whatever it was. So I got it for a bargain, and um, I'm planning on sort of like selling a couple of my other desks. So this is brand new, I've never used this, and hopefully it sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to unbox it, check it out, and then do a sound test and see what it's got. So here we go. Alright, so this is the mixer up close and it looks pretty much identical to a Behringer 2442 mixer which I've also had one of and it was great. I can't really say anything bad about it. It does look a lot like a Mackie as well which is kind of where Behringer went with those whole Xenix mixes in terms of looks I'm not talking about sound quality or build quality just the look of this it looks kind of like a VL series Mackie mixer and you know that's cool it's kind of like the look they all look a bit much the same anyway so except for Yamaha and maybe Soundcraft they sort of have their own thing going on but uh, let's take this out of the bag and uh, see what we got Oh, it's slippery. Jeez. Come on, grab it. Yeah. Alright, so here we go. This is the Carillon M16 4X. And as you can see, I'm going to show you one of the channel strips here. So, what we've got is our volume control for channel 1. And we also have a solo button. So, if we want to say get one microphone, sort it out in a mix or whatever, we can solo it, see how it sounds. Also has a peak LED, so if it's the input gain's too much, you will see that flash, which is always a handy feature. Left and right, what that does, it actually controls here, which is all the way up, the master output. So that's that's cool, you can assign that to the master. Or, you can assign it to one and two, or three and four, which is the group sends over next to the master control. So I'll show you those as well. So if you want to create different groups whereby you can control separate volume, then you can assign it to that as well. And, um, or just one or the other, or none, if you want to leave it off. Above the slider, it also has an on button, which I assume turns the channel on and off I haven't used this yet, as you can tell, I've just unboxed it, so this is the information that I just know through some experience. And we have some auxiliary sends here as well. So if you're sending a mix, say, to a fallback or whatever, you can then control the auxiliary sends here. And this one here is also the effects channel. So if you dial in, say, one of the reverbs that's built into this unit, you can then assign how much you want to come through by using the effects channel. And there's also two more aux send channels above those here. So there we go. Now, this is the EQ system. These are all pretty much the same. So we've got a low, and then we've also got a mid, which we can then scoop to the frequency that we want, which I think is one of those features that really can make a difference if you're in a room or something where you're getting a bit of feedback, you can actually scoop out or add a frequency that you might want in the mix. That's our high EQ right here. And above that we have a low cut button. So everything below 75 hertz in the low end, so that's like all the boom and the rumble, anything you don't really need that you can, you can cut out just by hitting a button. So it saves you having to fiddle around with the the EQ. So that's great for vocals. You won't generally need 
under 80 hertz for vocals. A lot of high end or good microphones will have an 80 hertz low cut filter. This has a 75, which is perfect for vocals. So, you know, if you want to get less boom in a, in a vocal, depending on the microphone, you can use that. And it will still sound warm and big, it's just the vocal range doesn't really cut in um, below that range there. So that's cool. Now these are your inputs here. So you've got a balanced and unbalanced line-in and also an ins. So the line-in is perfect for say if you've got an acoustic guitar and you want to plug that in, you can use that. Also making the assumption that if you've got a stereo signal, you can then run both in at the same time. So that's a really handy feature to use. Above that we have our microphone input, standard XLR, and all the channels are pretty much identical to that. There is one little thing that I forgot to mention down the bottom. There is a pan function as well, so you can pan your audio to the left and right if you've got a stereo output mix happening. If you're using one speaker, you don't want to use that, but the pan control, you know, with two front of house speakers, you can then move this around. Now that's really, really handy for guitars. You're playing with an electric guitar, mic'd up, you might want to pan that to the opposite side of the stage or spread it out if you're uh, you know, doing a drum mix or anything like that. If you're recording, you'd leave them straight. Okay, the mic gain goes from negative 10 all the way to plus 40 decibels. So the further around you turn this, the hotter the microphone will get. You can get a good balance pretty much by hitting the solo button down the bottom and then watching the LEDs move. Here, this is where you'll be able to check to see how hot your signal is. You know, you can clip it around somewhere in the middle of the yellow. You don't want it going into the red. Anywhere in green is like the safe zone. And you don't have to push everything to maximum either to get a good sound. That's just something I've worked out over the years. So a few people are probably wondering what effects are built into this mixer. We have small room, mid hall, tailplate, reverse plate, ping pong delay, soft chorus, gentle flanger, cool phaser, Vintage tremolo, delay reverb, chorus reverb, gate reverb, tap delay. I don't know what this one is here yet. I haven't played with that one yet. And peak noise, which is literally just noise coming through the speakers. I guess that's to test, make sure everything's on. The one I'd be inclined to use for vocals would be delay reverb, or even any of these small room or mid hall, which is subtle, just have it on subtle. A lot of these kind of effects, like ping pong delay and, and uh, these phases, out of all the desks I've used over the years, I've never heard any of those useless effects. So, you know, it might not be useless for everybody, but for me, it's pretty useless. It also has a lamp attachment here, so you can then plug in a lamp if you're working in a dark area. It's actually powered by this, and so you can see what you're doing in the dark, which is really, really cool. Should note also with the effects, you do get a little LED here, so you can see exactly what number you're on. All right, this is the back of the mixer, and as you can see, there's two main XLR outputs and two TRS or, or um, jack outputs here for standard speaker cables and also for the XLR. These are of higher audio quality. They're prone to fall out less if someone stands on a cable. That's another good thing about them. But these will sound pretty much the same. You know, you might notice a difference. The reason I bought this mixer was because of this, the eight output direct outs. So basically, eight of these are the first eight channels. So you can use this as a live mixer at the same time as sending those first eight mics into a recording console. So you're basically keeping the sound isolated. If I was just to use, say, the stereo output of this, into a recording console, I'd only have two channels. So no matter how much stuff was going in, I couldn't selectively output that individually to a recording console. And that's a great thing to have if you're, you know, got a couple of vocalists and you don't want to affect the live mix nor like compromise on recording. So these direct outs are going to be invaluable for what I do. And I'm going to start recording a lot more live gigs now because that is something that I really, really missed having. You've got all your returns and sends for your aux. Yeah, you got a foot switch as well, which I don't think comes with this unit stock. No, 
I didn't get that, so I guess you could temp tap tempo some of the uh, the effects or whatever, but I'm never going to use that. So yeah, if you get a buy a mixer and you want to just use it for live performance, these direct outputs might not be handy for you. But if you want to use a mixer for live performance and also then record in an isolated fashion, having direct outs is great. And more mixers need to have this. I don't know why a lot of mixers decide that you're just going to leave that out. I mean, really, it's just something that I think a lot of mixers need. And I don't know why they stop at eight either. Maybe it's a uniformity kind of design thing, but you know, I, I think leave the foot switch off and add another one or something. Yeah, that'd be great. But anyway, that's the back and over on the far left or right, depending on which way you're seeing this, I guess left would be the AC power, power and phantom power on and off. So if you're running a microphone like a condenser mic that you needs phantom power, then you just flick that on and you're good to go. And there's one question I get asked a lot about phantom power that if it's on, Will it affect dynamic microphones? And the answer is no, unless the microphones are cheap and nasty. Turning phantom power on here and having any kind of dynamic mic, whether it's for whatever you want to use it for, this won't actually affect the sound at all. So that's a cool thing. So you can then run both condenser and dynamic mics. So that's a good thing to think about. So that's, yeah, the one of the questions I get asked a lot about. The bottom looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. It's maybe a little bit slippery. The other stuff you get in the box was obviously the AC power cable. You get a nice, cool looking mixer instruction manual. And you get this, some rack mounts. There's two in there, by the way, just they're packaged together. So if you want to rack this mixer, all you need to do is screw these on and then uh, mount this mixer on a rack unit. All right, let's go through the effects. We're on number one right now, and this is with it off. This is with it on. Let's skip to midway. Try that again. Check one, two. Check one, two. All right, so number seven. You can really hear it. One, two, one, one. One, two, one, two, check, one. Let's try the delay and reverb, 74, all right, one, two, one, two, one, two, okay, one, two, one, two. Delay and reverb 74. So I'd probably use this, but just have it all the way down. 